Hey guys, this is Ron. So this is the sixth video in our series on rediscovering C. In this video, we'll talk about uh, using some of our conditionals uh, to test various uh, states or values uh, that may exist within our program. So primarily we'll be using if or if else, um, or we'll be using our switch statement. So if else uh, is, is quite handy when you may uh, want to test the range of certain values, or maybe um, you want to test um, multiple conditions, um, if you want to test um, to see if um, a, va a value is null or something like that, right? There's, there's something specific that you want to test. And if that's true, do something, right? And if it's not true, do potentially do something else, right? You'll end up using if and if else quite a bit, um, but there are times when um, maybe what you're checking uh, kind of falls into a nice, pretty um, range of values, very specific integer values, and that's where switch oftentimes comes in. Uh, in our example that, that we'll kind of walk through here, uh, I'll try to also demonstrate the use of an enum, uh, an enumeration, uh, because I find that when you're using switch, it, it works really well with enums uh, because it makes it a little bit more readable uh, than a bunch of if statements uh, slapped together. So let's kind of do a, a very simple example of using an if and an if else, uh, and then we'll kind of go from there. So in my directory, all I have is the make file that we were just looking at, or the readme file that we were just looking at, and I have a make file. And so I'll upload these uh, to the GitHub repository for this series. Uh, the link should be in the description of this video. Uh, but essentially, all this one does is does a wildcard search uh, for all the files ending in .c, and it's going to put those into a list called sources. It's then going to take that list of sources, and it's going to do a pattern match um, and do a, a substitution. And in this case, um, all we're saying is we're going to take all of the files the end in .c, I'm going to take the file name and I'm just going to put in my bins a list of just those file names. So it, it essentially takes all of these .c files, strips off the .c extension, and puts that in a list called bins. So that when I clean, it just removes the binary files and not the .c files. Now I could have a lot of extra stuff in here to actually compile each file. Uh, I chose not to do that, just wanted to keep it simple. But because we've put our warning flags up here, as we've seen in some of our other videos, even when I compile it by just doing make and the file name, it will still put these warning flags on there so I'll know, uh, hopefully, that I've made an error in my program. All right, so nothing too complicated, but the first time we've seen the use of wildcards and, and these pattern substitutes uh, in our series so far. Uh, don't get hung up on this. The point of this video is the if statement and the switch statement. All right, so let's do uh, vi, we'll call this age.c. Uh, we'll do a, a pound include, and we'll bring in our stdio.h so that we can have printf. In main, we're not gonna send anything into our program, no command line arguments. And here we'll specify our age equals 19, all right? We'll do if age is greater than or equal to 18, we'll say, um, congrats you can vote. So in the US, you can vote at age 18. And we'll close that off. Return zero to show that our program executed correctly, and we'll write it. In this second tab, I'm just gonna go ahead and make age. 
And so we can see that uh, GCC compiled with our flags, took in age.c, and it output a binary called age. And if we look, we do have a binary called age. It is executable. So we run it, and congrats, you can vote. So this makes sense. We're 19 years old. 19 is greater than or equal to 18, so it executes this line. Now, what we can do is we can do else print f you cannot vote yet. And so we'll see that else statement, if I recompile, that else statement does not run, right? So we still have congrats, you can vote. And this is because this first check right here is true. So it executes this and then goes to the bottom of the if statement, right? And it starts executing uh, from line 11 down. Now, if we were to change this so that this one is false, it's going to continue going down and evaluate each uh, entry until it finds something that it can work with. Now, this else statement has no condition attached to it, right? So it's automatically going to execute if all of the checks above it were false. So if I go back up here and I replace this with a six, so now we are 16. Go ahead and compile execute you cannot vote yet and this makes sense because this is false so it goes to the next check this has no condition so it automatically executes it now what if we wanted to uh, give him a little bit of encouragement and instead we'll do something like this we'll see else if age uh, is greater than or equal to 16 We'll say print F. We'll say be careful with the car because uh, at 16 and in some states maybe a little younger, you can drive, right? So I have an error here. Forgot my quotation. All right. So what does this look like now? So we're going to evaluate this first one. If they're greater than 18, we're going to print this. If this is false, we go to the next check. So else if, and it's not ag, it is age. If their age is greater than or equal to 16, they can drive. Otherwise, we come down to this last if, and we'll print, you cannot vote yet. nor can you drive and we'll go with that so let's go ahead and recompile and rerun it so now we're saying be careful with the car and that's because they're 16 which means they can now drive so we evaluate if this is false we come to the next one evaluate oh it's now true so we run this one and then we go to the bottom and start executing from 13 on now, if I were to make this less than 16, we would evaluate false, we would evaluate false, and then we would come in and run the else statement. All right, so the if and if else uh, isn't too hard, you'll definitely use these a lot because one of the things you'll find in C, it is really easy uh, to screw things up if you're not constantly checking as you go along. So uh, in one of our previous videos, uh, we evaluated, hey, is this um, is this variable null, meaning it doesn't have a value, um, especially when you're talking about strings. It's really important to uh, see if it, it's null or not, um, or if you're talking about some type of data structure that you've built, like a linked list, you really want to be checking for null, because if you try to reach into it and it's null, your program you know, encounters a segment fault 
uh, or a seg fault and blows up, right? So you'll use the if statement all the time, right? So not too difficult. We'll go ahead and quit out of that. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our basic switch statement. So let's read this again. So in the case of our if, we had a wide range of conditions, right? So it's either greater than 18, which meant it could have been 19, 20, 21, 101. Um, and it's not just integers that we might be tested for. Like I talked about before, you might be testing to see, does this variable actually hold a value or is it null, right? Well, with our switch, we're talking about constant integer values, meaning we pretty much know what values should be in it. And this is where, you know, switch statement, you know, will start to be useful. Now there are some weird things in, the, in here in that um, unlike our um, if statement where there were, there were real defined blocks with our uh, open bracket, close bracket, the switch statement isn't quite like that. It, it basically uses labels inside of it. And so we're gonna basically have to instruct it when to stop you know, executing and jump out of the switch statement. Um, and if you don't do that, um, and it might be intentional, it'll basically fall through and start executing, you know, the next group, uh, and that may or may not be what you want. And, and we'll kind of walk through what that looks like. You can also, so in our if, we had this kind of else at the very end that we could use. Well, in the case of switch, it's called the default, right? And so it basically acts like the else did. If nothing else above it was true, go ahead and execute uh, the default uh, action. And then we'll talk a little bit about enum, so enumerations. This is where I think switch statements are kind of uh, useful because when you pair them up with an enum, it's a whole lot more readable uh, and, and the values then start to make sense. So let's kind of walk through it so you know this makes more sense to you uh, you know going forward. Um, so let's um, we'll do an example as if we were handed a coin, right? Um, and so American coins uh, only come in a couple different sizes and so we'll keep it kind of simple. So we'll vi uh, coin.c. We'll go ahead and pound include stdo.h main all right and we'll say our coin is worth five cents all right so we've essentially gotten a nickel and so we can do switch and then in brackets we're going to list the variable that we're uh, essentially testing right and so now we have to provide uh, the values that we should match against. So these are our cases. And so we'll do a case five. We'll do a print F. You have a nickel. Now, remember how I said that the, the switch was a little bit odd and that there weren't real good predefined blocks like there were with the opening and closing brackets that we saw in the if statement. Instead, we now have to break. Now break says, okay, you're in the switch statement. We matched against a case. So coin was equal to five. We're gonna execute this. And now when we get here, we're going to break out of our switch. All right. And so then we'll close here uh, and we'll be good. I'll go ahead and return zero. Close my main. Right. And we'll go ahead and make coin. It says you have a nickel. Now let's go up and we will do a case 10 F you have a dime we'll also break 
come down here case 25 F we have a quarter all right so these are standard uh, American kind of coins here and then we'll do a default Remember we talked, you can specify a default. This is kind of like that else statement. It's kind of like a catch-all. And we'll do a print F. Say, uh, I don't know what you have. All right. And we're good. So default, because we're all the way at the end, we don't need to specify a break because we're at the end of the switch. All right. So if we go ahead and recompile, rerun, we have a nickel. So that makes sense. And if we specify that we have 25, we should see that it says we have a quarter. So that makes sense. But if I say uh, I have, I don't know, uh, I don't know, what is it, the Susan B. Anthony or something like that. You can have basically one that's worth a dollar. Not very common. It says, I don't know what you have, right? Because it didn't match five, it didn't match 10, it didn't match 25, so it went down to the default. Now, what if we weren't trying to specify, you know, what they had? Um, we just wanted to say something like, we'll start, let's say they have 25 here, 10 here, and five cents here. Let's not do that. Let me, so that you have examples of this. I'm going to leave coin as is, All right? So it should, if I rebuild it, it will say you have a nickel. I'm gonna go ahead and copy coin.c so that I don't have to write everything over again. And I will say um, items.c. It's probably a terrible name, but that's what we'll go with. So quit out of that, we'll write EI into items.c. And this time, instead of it being like this, I could say 25, 10, and five. And so I'm going to remove this break. I'm going to remove this break. And I'm going to, I'll keep that break in so that it doesn't execute uh, the printf. And instead of this printf, what I will put in is uh, if you have a quarter, I'll say you purchase, we'll, cons we'll Assume we're in an, the old days where things were really cheap, right? We'll say you purchase a soda pop, all right? Uh, and then if you have a dime, we'll say you have, you purchase a lolly pop. I'm sure that's not how it's spelled. If you have a quarter, I will say um, you purchase gum. We'll make sure we actually spell purchase right. So what should we see, All right? So if we have five, it should say, nope, this doesn't match, this doesn't match, this one does match, so we purchase gum, right? Let's uh, go ahead and make items. Uh, let's see, warning, this statement may fall through. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking for, right? So they even called it fall through. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and run it. So these are just warnings, um, but it's letting you know, hey, you probably forgot to put in a break statement. So in this case, you purchase gum. All right, cool. Well, what happens if I, per or if I walked in with a dime? All right, so what I should see is that I purchase multiple items, right? So I purchase a lollipop and then I purchase gum, right? Because I've got enough money. So I get a lollipop and gum. And if I walk in with a quarter, and 
the recompile. Now all of a sudden I can afford a soda pop, a lollipop, and gum, right? And so if you don't put that break statement in, it's gonna fall into the next one. Even though this doesn't match, it just keeps falling through, right? And again, that might be what you want. So in this case, if I have a quarter, I can buy everything. If I have a nick, if I have a dime, I can only buy these two things. If I have a nickel, I can only purchase gum. And the default statement still works, right? So if I only come in with a penny, because a penny can't uh, buy anything, says, I don't know what you have. So that doesn't really make sense in this context. It says, we'll make that is, you don't have enough money to buy anything. All right, so that makes a little bit more sense in this context. We'll go ahead and compile and you don't have enough money to buy anything, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to 10 so that when I push it to GitHub, uh, it makes a little bit more sense and you can kind of see that fall through action. Um, and I might even, let's do, we'll put it in a comment here. Uh, we'll put it at the end. Falls through, through it. Haha. Uh -huh. All right. Put that there. So now when you look at it, you'll see, oh, yep, it's missing the break, so it automatically falls through. Yep, it's missing the break, automatically falls through, and then we break out uh, after we purchase our gum. All right. So I hope that uh, makes a little bit of sense. So make items. I don't think I actually change anything. I just put in some, some uh, comments. Um, but you can kind of see that action. Now, let me go ahead and copy this example, uh, copy items, um, and we'll call this enums. We're gonna call this items.c, enum uh, c, so that we can kind of see what that looks like. So, if you're, you know, maybe American, you just see 25 in your head, you automatically translate that to quarter. You see 10, you automatically translate that to dime. Like it makes sense to you. But maybe somebody reading your code doesn't understand that 25 actually stands for a quarter, 10 stands for dime. Now there's ways that we could kind of make this a little bit clearer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what did we call this? We called it uh, enum, right? Uh, enum.c, so vi enum.c. All right, and so instead of specifying the actual amount, we can do this thing called an enum. So we call it enum uh, money. And in here, we're gonna specify a few things. So we could specify uh, penny. We could specify um, uh, nickel, and we could specify dime, and we could specify quarter. So these are some uh, pretty typical, uh, you know, coin sizes. Now, by default, as we create enums, it's going to automatically start at zero here. So penny's going to be equal to zero, nickel's going to be equal to one, then two, then three, right? Well, that doesn't make sense in you know what we're trying. You uh, in other scenarios it might make sense, but instead we can do something like this, and we can assign an actual value um, to those things. So a nickel is five, a dime is ten, and a quarter is twenty-five. Right. So this is starting to to make a little bit more sense. So now instead of doing 10, we can just say he has a dime or, or she has a dime. And so now we have case quarter, case dime, case nickel, right? And so essentially um, we're testing our coin. Our coin actually holds the value 10, right? 
but when we use the enum name dime, it's still going to match, right? And when somebody reads this, it looks a little bit clearer. Okay, well, we're checking to see if they have a quarter. We're checking to see if they have a dime, a nickel, so on and so forth. But in the background, it's just using these integer values, right? But this reads better to us, right? We know that they have a dime. And so, oh, taste dime, that, this is the one that should run. So let's go ahead and try. So we'll do make enum. And you purchase a lollipop and you purchase gum, right? So that makes sense. So it does ex the exact same thing as our items, but it's a little bit more readable uh, because you know we don't have to think about, okay, this one's 25, this one's 10. We just, okay, they were given a dime, we match dime, right? But in the background, we know it's, it's using those integer values. And so sometimes you'll see, uh, you know, these enums paired up with your switch statement uh, because it makes it a little bit more readable. Now, again, falling through because you, you're missing the break statement, it might be a mistake, so be careful, but it also might be exactly what you want. You want multiple, you know, things to execute, right? And so sometimes uh, you'll see case quarter, case dime, case nickel, all kind of put together and then a few statements underneath, right? And so anyone, if any one of them matches, it you know executes those lines. In our case, this makes more sense. If they have a quarter, they can get a pop, a lollipop, and uh, or soda pop, lollipop, and gum. If they have a dime, they only get a lollipop and gum, and so on, right? So I hope that was a little bit helpful uh, to you. Again, didn't go over a ton of stuff here, but you'll see the if statement used all the time you'll end up using it all the time but there are cases when using a switch statement um you know is a little bit more readable depending upon what you're trying to do uh it might make more sense uh in in your program so again hope this was valuable to you um and i'll get this uh pushed up to github for you all right thanks for watching bye